G'day, my name's Gordon Deadman and welcome to another episode of Bushcraft Survival. Today we're going to be having a look at a bit of bush tucker, in particular the wild parsnip. Its botanical name is Trachymene incisor. Now the wild parsnip, also known as a yam, is one of our tastiest wild foods. It is related to both the parsnip and the carrot, has an underground tuber that is packed full of carbohydrates and it can be eaten raw or cooked. Today we're going to be having a look at the area in which it's found, how to dig it up and how to cook it. Now here's a close up of the wild parsnip and how we would find it in the wild. As you can see it has a very delicate lace like flower, quite pretty, which comes out in the summer months. And when you find larger colonies, there's a set, you'll see clumps of these beautiful white flowers. But a lot of the time you'll see them actually growing individually. And if we trace that stem down to the ground, we'll see that at the bottom, we have some a base-like leaves that sort of, sort of resemble carrots. But as the name suggests, the leaves somewhat resemble teeth or incisors. And all we need to do is dig down below that leaf base until we find the taproot or the tuber. This is the kind of area that you'll find the wild parsnip. They generally like sandy well-drained soils or rocky outcrops. Now a lot of the ground around here in this particular area has a lot of quartz, sort of rocky quartz, and that's generally the area you'll find them as well as a lot of kangaroo grass. Sometimes you find them in large clumps, sometimes you only find them individually. Well here's a close up of the wild parsnip. I actually broke the uh, stem off the tuber, which is quite, happens quite a lot because it's very delicate once you get down to the, uh, the root there. And as you can see, that's quite a sizable tuber. I'm just going to stick my hand down so I can get a bit of scale. I think it quite a, a few of those would make quite a nice feast. Obviously a lot, lot of uh, carbohydrates, which are great in a survival situation. We follow that up. We'll have a look at the flower. And there's a close look at that delicate flower, as we can see. The digging stick is one of the most important tools in bushcraft. Other than what the name suggests, it has multiple uses. The digging stick has been used by Australian Aborigines for thousands of years. It was of particular importance to Aboriginal women, as it was their primary means of digging up roots and tubers, which was the mainstay of their diet. I have a couple of digging sticks here. This big one is a stick that I cut green, shaped to a blunt chisel end and then a fire hardened that. That's very, very durable and capable of quite robust tasks. This smaller one is a throwaway digging stick that I've quickly fashioned by getting a dead stick, once again shaping it to a chisel end. On the other end, it's shaped that's more pointed. That's a bit narrow, it allows me to negotiate the small tubers and after I've finished with it, I can throw it away. Aboriginal people had tools that they fashioned and carried with them everywhere. They also had tools that they could quickly whip up and then discard after use. to be careful here because sometimes the roots don't always go straight down. The tuber can sometimes be off to um, one side as we can see here. Okay. 
that's because there's quite as I said they these uh, the wild parsnip likes uh, rocky ground and there we go it's quite a big one it's one Now I've had a bit of rain so it actually makes these a little easy to pull out when it's uh, been raining. It hasn't rained for a while and the ground's a bit harder, it's uh, not as easy. That applies to all yams, not just the native yam. Being careful to dig around. And like most uh, plants, the younger ones are always seem to be the tastiest. The old ones, even though bigger, can tend to be a little bit fibrous. There we go, it's another one. Much smaller than the last one. We've collected this lot in about 10 minutes. And there's many more about. Once again, when we collect any sort of bush tucker, or any resource for that matter, we only take what we need, we never take any more. We need always leave enough to grow back. Very, very important. That's uh, just respect for the environment. Now these are packed full of carbohydrates. And we're going to take these back to camp and cook them up. In order to cook our wild parsnip, we first must prepare our fire. And the best part for wild parsnip is because they're not very big, we're just going to stick them in the hot ash. So we don't want the fire too hot, so I'm going to rake some of these coals back. And I've got a section here that is just nice hot ash, and that's where we're going to stick our tubers. Alright, so I'm just raking back our coals. I'm trying to try and cook in the hot ash. I'm raking there, we don't want it too hot. Trim those up a little bit, break those, uh, break the tops of the leaves off. It's very important to make sure that you identify the plant correctly when you're digging them up. And generally I like to leave the leaves on them so I've got a hundred percent identification. That goes for any wild edible. Just going to pop those in the fire. And then gently I'm going to rake just a light covering of coals and ash over the top. Try to get a covering of ash because then it excludes the oxygen and stops them burning. Same goes for fish. If possible, you want, want to exclude all the oxygen. And we're going to leave those in there for about uh, five to ten minutes. probably five minutes I would say. Now we can also boil those as well. And that works quite nicely. So we'll unearth those in, a, in about five minutes. Okay, it's been about eight minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and get those out. Be very careful, there's a couple there, but obviously got some gloves. Makes it a bit safer.
Okay, these have been taken out of the fire now. On this side we have the cooked ones, and here we have the raw ones. Now the raw ones, taste great. Just have to wash the dirt off them. Quite refreshing. Hmm. I think I'll have another. The young ones taste better than the older ones. Now, if the cooked ones, get my knife, cut one open. Obviously, the thick ones are going to take a bit, bit more to cook. But you can also boil these. And they taste great boiled as well. So I'll come a bit closer so you can have a look. There's the, uh, they cook up like inside. Hmm. Good, they have a, a sweet potato-like taste to them. Quite different from other things you've tasted, but it's quite it's definitely a sweet side to it. Now, of course, like a potato, you can pick off the outer outer rind. It even looks like a little mini potato. Hmm. These work well boiled as well. Just like you boil potato. Obviously you need quite a few of them. But they're quite easily easy. They're quite easy to, uh, to collect. if you're presenting these to others to eat you would peel them first so they look a bit more presentable well I hope you've enjoyed this episode on the wild pasta and how to find it dig for it and cook it my name's Gordon Dedman and I look forward to seeing you again on another episode of Bushcraft Survival